Hey Grace Point, I wanted to come and share with you something today that's been on my mind for a little while. Behind me, I have a bust of Abraham Lincoln, one of my favorite politicians and leaders. And I was impressed uh, by his wisdom and even his wit. And one of the things that it was, we've been processing as a nation is how do we remember people? Like how do we remember, how do we think about people in the past? Now, if you look at Abraham Lincoln, there were some things that he said and did that were absolutely amazing in my estimation. There are other pieces that he wrote or experienced that you wish would have been said differently or done differently. And I think it leads us to the question is, how do we think about those who came before us? And I think this is an important question because also it reflects on how do we think about ourselves? Uh, one way I think we can look at this is go back to the scripture and look at some of the notable people or heroes that we have in scripture, such as David, King David. We see he is a man of greatness, of valor, of exceptional ability, uh, particularly on the battlefield. He was a king that often led with humility and graciousness. But he had some incidents. There were some moments where he felt very far from God. There was some moments his heart was running from God. And yet, overall, God still includes his story and calls him a man after God's own heart. Now, is David a man after God's own heart in every single incident of his life? No. Does he wish he was more a man after God's own heart in every single incident? I have no doubt. But when we see scripture, what we see is we see a, a recording by God of people. We see their strengths, the times that they perform, the times that they demonstrate and act in faith. And we also see their weakness. I, I think instead of canceling people from the past or ignoring them, and, and this does not mean we should keep up every statue. I'm not going to get into that kind of discussion. But instead of just saying everything we can point out, if someone was bad in one area, they're bad across the board. Let's look at scripture, how, how scripture handles them. Someone like David, I think we're given both an honest assessment of the things that he did really well and an honest assessment of things that he failed in. We see other characters like Peter. We love the story of Peter, one of Jesus' disciples. He had some moments of incredible faith and he had some moments of incredible failure. How do we look at someone's life? If you go to a funeral, often it feels like you're telling stories and sometimes the stories of someone's life are just so moving and touching. And other times it's hard to recognize who the individual was based on the stories that are told. I would like to suggest maybe a couple ways to look at someone's life in the past. First is view it honestly. Like we can be honest about someone's successes and someone's failures. Because as humans, we have them both. Sometimes it seems like we have more failures than we have successes. But if we're going to be honest with ourselves and honest with each other, is that there's no one that we're going to look at that doesn't have failures, that doesn't have weaknesses, that doesn't have flaws. There's also very few we're going to look at that doesn't have some strengths or some successes. So I think the first thing is we see in scripture is let's be honest. Honest with the good, honest with the bad. The second piece is I think to maybe take a look in a little bit of humility. Part of the reason why I, I think it's so cool that the way the Bible was written is that God wrote these in a very accurate, realistic fashion. That we don't see a book full of superheroes, Iron Man and Captain America and people that are almost invincible. We see people that are flawed just like us. And in some ways, I think we should look at that and say, wow, like, if God can use them, he can use me as well. But as we're looking at others, let's be careful not to put the microscope on somebody else's life. Let's not be careful to, to dig into every single thing that they did wrong. While at the same time, excusing ourselves of everything. In fact, we're encouraged to, that the judgment that we use on others, with that same judgment that we ourselves will be judged. That if, if we use the standard of 100% perfection for someone else, are we ready to face that standard ourselves? Or do we extend a little bit of grace? Now, there are certainly areas that the grace should not be extended in or justice is still needed. 
But when we're looking at someone's life, if we look at the finest, minute misstatement or, or a piece of it just that wasn't quite perfect, and we view that as the entirety of their life, I don't think we'd want to be judged like that. In fact, I, I know I wouldn't want to be judged like that. So let's judge in the way that we ourselves would want to be judged. I think it's also important to notice that history and hopefully human life grows and evolves. You know, some would say that, you know, maybe as parents and, you know, after, you know, we're, we're doing better than our previous parents. And in some ways, I would say I hope so. Like, I hope my kids, if they become parents someday, they do a better job than I do. That they're more successful, that they're, they're more balanced, that they're more fair. But I know if, and I highly doubt that it's the case, but if I have parented better than my parents, it's only because we've had this incredible legacy to build on. I think sometimes we look at where we're at and we're like, why couldn't they have accomplished more? But we forget that they were born in a different time, in a different place, and that it took progress. And the things that maybe now we see clearly and see accurately are only because of the great foundation that's been laid before us. That as we look back, we can easily despise those who made mistakes that we ourselves would never make. And yet I think we should also be prepared for generations in the future to look at our lives and say, how could you mess that up? How could you make those same mistakes? How do we view someone's life? If we're looking at it and and we're looking to summarize that, how do we view someone's life? Well, I would suggest maybe a couple pieces. One, I think it's helpful to look at trajectory. Like, we all start at a certain spot, and from where we start, are we increasing? Are we growing? Are we becoming more like Jesus? Are we becoming better? Or are we declining? The, the, The legacy that our parents left us, are we building on that? Or are we going backwards? The things that our culture assumed as norm, are we are we improving on that? Or are we sliding? Trajectory, I think, is important. I think it's also important to say, look at the totality. Yes, maybe Hitler did one good thing, or a couple good things. But we look at totality of that, and we say, this is a problem. That overall, the negative far outweighed the positive. And, and in, in ways that are almost hard to even express. We look at totality and we look at trajectory. I think those are two really helpful pieces that allow us to accurately assess someone else's life. And I think it's important we, that we even learn from those who are negative examples. There are negative examples that we have all around us that we can benefit from, that we can grow from, that we can use as a, a cautionary tale for ourselves. You know, I'm, I'm still an Abraham Lincoln fan. Did he have everything perfect? No. Was he born in times very different than ours? A- absolutely. Did he grow and improve and, and lead us even as a nation into a better and a more complete fulfillment of what it means to be an American? Uh, yes, he absolutely did. Let's not cancel those we disagree with. Let's not want them to shut up. Let's not ignore the lessons that history has to teach us. Instead, let's look at history as we the Bible encourages us to. Let's be honest with the flaws, the faults, and the successes of those that we look at. Let's learn from that. And if we're going to evaluate a life, let's evaluate it in a way that we would be okay with someone evaluating our, our life with. Let's use the same grace that we would want extended to us towards others as we evaluate them. And as we do so, I think our, we're going to be a lot slower to judge. And we're going to be a lot quicker to learn. I love you.